G'day YouTube, what MJ here and welcome back. Well, gas prices starting to make their way back up again. So this is a bit disappointing. I'm not sure what's happening. I guess, you know, there's been a bit of explosion with ETH, uh, people buying it, but uh, there must be some smart contracts being done with the ETH 2.0 stuff is uh, my only guess. You know, could be some stuff happening on Uniswap as well, I suppose, but I think they were moving to layer two solutions, if I uh, remember correctly. So I'm going to say a lot of this is more to do with the uh, Ethereum 2.0 stuff, people starting to move uh, their ETH. BTC, so it's down a little bit, still 63%, so it hasn't quite made it to the 65% I thought it would, but... Uh, I still think it will, particularly once it kind of uh, gets on its next move. I think it'll uh, go up $452 uh, billion, so not too bad. But we can see, we can see, sorry, things are sort of ranging sideways a little bit. You know, they had their big pump, and now it's a bit of ranging sideways. Uh, and a lot of coins are doing this at the moment. Let's have a look. What are the big movers in the last 24 hours? Ooh, Civic, 90%. Uh, in 24 hours, 500% in the last seven days. Wow, I have not heard anything about that coin in a really, really long time. So, yeah, unsure if this is a pump and dump, but you know, for anyone who's holding Civic, oh, you'd be cheering right now. So, Gollum, Yearn Finance, uh, you know, st starting to make its way back up. You know, I can't believe only like maybe seven days ago this was down at 9,000. So it's doubled uh, itself in seven days. That's pretty good. Uh, not quite as good as Civic, but still not bad. Decentraland, thank goodness. Uh, that was really hurting me for a while. Uh, and Aave, old, 106% over the last seven days. There we go. I'll have to have a look at that. And 105% uh, for the new Aave. So I think that was Aave, yeah, Lend and then Aave. All right, uh, reserve token. So, I mean, in the last seven days, there's been some amazing uh, sort of gains, which is good. Synthetics Network, uh, you know, really happy that they're starting to move. And Uniswap, I'm finally making back some of the money I lost. I mean, I'm still down a bit. I think I bought it at nearly $3, $4, so it's got a ways to go. But, yeah, we can see there's some really good movers in the last 24 hours. What about losers? Let's have a look. Nothing too bad, really. So there we go. Single digit sort of losses. Energy web down a little bit, but I mean, you know, 32%. Of course, there's going to be some kind of pullback at some stage, but not too bad. But crypto.com, I mean, that is, that's really struggling at the moment. Uh, I was somewhat bullish on that coin early on, but yeah, it's really died off. And it'll be interesting to see if it can kind of come back because it's been going down for a long time. Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin down a little bit, that's a shame, but you know, again, still had a good pump, now trading sideways a little bit, but somewhat uh, going down, and again, I spoke about Litecoin yesterday on my video, and this may be a coin, you know, no guarantees, and definitely not financial advice, but this may be a coin that, you know, institutions try to build positions in when they realize there's just not much Bitcoin left. Litecoin is uh, basically a copy of, of Bitcoin, uh, you know, some slight variances, uh, you know, there's more of it. I think there's 65 million Litecoin in total. Uh, it hasn't been as round, around for as long, so it hasn't been, you know, as mined and all the rest of it. So, yeah, keep a lookout for Litecoin. Could be wrong and, you know, it could just be, uh, you know, dead in the water. I, I, I hope not. I like Litecoin and what Charlie Lee did. Uh, there's not a lot of development going on with it though, other than Mimble Wimble, which don't get me wrong, is still pretty good and uh, is likely something that Bitcoin will pick up in the future. Litecoin seems to be a bit of a test net for a lot of things for Bitcoin. So maybe Mimble Wimble makes it onto Bitcoin in the future. But again, I think, you know, when, you know, big institutions and that realize that they've kind of missed their chance to really, you know, get heavy into Bitcoin, Litecoin could be something that they look at because it's still newer. There's still plenty left out there to be mined and they can just get a really good foothold. And look, it's been regulated as well. So, you know, banks can keep custody of it and things like that. So that's really promising for it. But, you know, time will tell whether that pans out. Bitcoin SV, yeah, not a massive fan. But again, pretty minor losses. Nothing sort of too major. Now, I found this and I found it really interesting. Celsius reports it doubled its crypto holdings to $2.2 billion in six months. That is pretty outstanding. They are up and coming 
uh, and I'm definitely looking into them currently. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to get involved, to be honest. Uh, I like Max Mashinsky. I like his ethos that, you know, why have the banks, you know, make all this money? He's built a platform where, don't get me wrong, of course he's making money and the platform itself is making money, but they don't take anywhere near as much as what the banks would normally take. You know, they they look after their customers and particularly with the Celsius coin, uh, it looks pretty promising. It's really been growing. Now, obviously at some stage it could definitely sell off and you'll have to make your mind up about whether you want to uh, earn your rewards in the Celsius token or whether you want to earn it in the same uh, as what you're investing in. But definitely looking interesting, and we'll continue and have a read. So centralized crypto lending platform Celsius claims to have doubled its holdings in just six months, now boasting 2.2 billion in assets under management. Crypto lending and borrowing platform Celsius has announced that it now holds more than $2.2 billion in digital assets. According to the November 1st release, Celsius has more than doubled its net crypto holdings six months after surpassing $1 billion in June. The platform has attracted more than 215,000 total users users worldwide in total, soon to be uh, 215,001. <laughs> I'll be getting in very, very shortly. Excluding its AUM, Celsius's balance sheet now includes cash and its native cell tokens worth more than $680 million. So nice, not too bad. Celsius offers a centralized alternative to decentralized finance, dubbed CFI, by much of the crypto community. Crypto assets deposited on the platform are lent to exchanges and market makers, with 80% of the interest uh, generated being distributed back to distributed. Uh, depositors. So that's what I really like about it. Yes, it's centralized and everyone wants, uh, you know, to have full decentralization. But look, some centralization uh, is not bad, particularly if they're acting uh, in the best interests of their members. And look, there are some companies out there that do that. And I'd like to think Celsius Network is one. And again, don't get me wrong, Max Mashinsky and the staff there, uh, they've all got coins in Celsius, but I believe they locked them away for two years, so they're not going to sell them uh, for a minimum of two years. So, you know, I guess you'd have to find out exactly when they got the coins to know when they might be dumped. But again, why dump them all and then just crash the price, you know, sell them off sort of slowly uh, or, or just hold on to them. It, it'll be interesting to see what they do. So they've done really well. So since launching in July 2018, Celsius claims to have paid more than $80 million in rewards to depositors. In the announcements, Celsius CEO and founder Alex Mashinsky describes his company's success as proving that interest, uh, interest income is the new app killer for crypto. So let's go over to Celsius and have a look at their site. So we can see you can earn up to nearly 14% on USDC coin. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, BlockFi, I'm not sure if they're paying uh, that much. I'm with BlockFi and I really like BlockFi and I recommend it. There's links uh, down below for BlockFi if you want to join up. 7.1% uh, for Ethereum, not too bad. And 6.2% for Bitcoin, uh, not too bad at all. So we can see here you go to the site. Now the app is a phone app. So you download it on your phone. Uh, and yeah, it's looking very, very interesting. And what I like most is we can go over to here and we can see all the different uh, coins that they, uh, you know, you can earn money on or, or sell tokens, you know, essentially money. So again, there's Ethereum, 7.21%. .1%, That's if you're claiming Celsius. If it's just in-kind rewards, 5%. 5% still not bad though. There's not a bank I don't think out there that's offering anything anywhere near that at the moment, not even remotely close. Bitcoin, 6%. Now it's only for the first BTC and then I think it drops back down to uh, something like this, but still, you know, even 4% on Bitcoin is pretty good. Uh, and again, 6% uh, is really good if you're going in sell tokens. Now, Synthetics Network Token, if you're not staking it through the actual place itself, 21% is an outrageous, outrageously good uh, return. Uh, Matic Network, same thing. If you're not staking with Matic Network, uh, then you can come over here and get 21%, you know, basically at 21.5%. Let's just round it up to what it is. Uh, quite nice. Tether, uh, True USD, DAI, uh, USD Coin. Uh, and there's a number of, so I think that's the Hong Kong dollar, Paxo Standard, the Gemini dollar, uh, GDP, so uh, 
Great Britain pound, the Binance US dollar, the Australian, the true Australian dollar. So for anyone who's Australian out there, obviously this is not too bad. Now Uniswap, uh, you know, this is great. You know, Uniswap, that's a pretty good return. Litecoin, a zero X, there's just a ton. Chainlink, at the moment, I'm sure a lot of us are waiting for Chainlink staking. Well, we can just earn some percentage while we're waiting. Now again, I really like this platform. I haven't joined yet. I haven't pulled the trigger, but I'm pretty confident that I'm going to. I wouldn't put everything I own into something like this. You know, th there are risks that come with, you know, investing in anything. So just, you know, being mindful that you don't want to put everything into here. Uh, if something were to happen, then you're basically left with nothing. So, you know, whatever percentage you decide, uh, go with it. I really wouldn't recommend maybe 30 to 50 percent absolute max would be 50 percent so then if you know it all goes you know terribly uh, and they close down and run off not that i think they're going to but or you know there's a bug in the system or whatever happens they get hacked you haven't lost everything really i think more sort of maybe 30 percent uh, is really where i would kind of sit but look you make your own mind up but I mean, there's a ton of coins here. EOS, XRP, Zcash, Decentraland, uh, Amise Go, Stella, Kyber Network, Ethereum Classic. There is tons of coins here. Really, you know, if you're a new investor, this might not be a bad place to, you know, buy some of these tokens just for the fact that you can go and earn uh, some, you know, percentage on these. Uh, and again, in a bull market, yeah not too bad at all so this is definitely something that i'm looking at and the sell token itself so let's go over here celsius network number 33 let's see how they've been doing so wow three thousand six hundred and eighty nine percent in the last year and i think they're not much uh you know older than a year i think 2018 so a little bit more right sort of two years older but we can see it was really flat until very recently basically that is almost when the pandemic happened once that happened their business has just been climbing and climbing and climbing so yeah very very interesting uh really liking what i'm seeing with celsius network and again whether i go for the celsius token or not uh you know remains to be seen but even their rewards without going for the sell token i mean they're still pretty good but if you're taking the celsius token you're getting that extra reward reward for it so interesting all right last but not least let's get on to bitcoin so we can see we've had this you know big pump it's definitely retraced but now it's starting to coil we got a little bit of a triangle a little bit of a pendant thing happening here and we're just going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. Look, it could break out to the downside, come back and test 13,800. Absolutely possible. And it wouldn't be, you know, bad news if it did. It would just be a sort of healthy, you know, correction considering the pump. Because again, if we get the ruler out. So what do we got here? 17th of October. So really it's just over two weeks. It's a 42% uh, rise in Bitcoin in two weeks. You can't really complain too much with that. So if we were to pull back down to sort of here, then that's still a 24% gain, again, in roughly sort of two weeks. A little bit sort of more than two weeks, maybe three weeks. But again, what else are you investing in that is going up 20% uh, in a matter of three weeks. There's not too many things out there. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, I am suspecting that we're probably going to come back down and touch this and bounce around in here a bit more before we break to the upside I don't think it's going to be to the downside. I think there's just too much exuberance But in saying that uh, there's talk of uh, a vaccine at the moment uh, and the stock market stock markets have really rallied and Bitcoin took uh, a little bit of a hit but again, it's only a tiny bit of a hit. If we were to pull back to here, we're still up 24% in the last three weeks. That is still amazingly good. Uh, and again, I don't think it's going to come down to here. And if it did, I don't expect it to go lower. I mean, you could get a wick or something that might go down below, but I believe we will continue to move upwards. You know, Once there's talk of stimulus uh, and things like that, and trust me, stimulus is coming, 
Uh, there's, you know, second waves happening in Europe uh, and in the States. And now that the elections are over, they'll most likely go back into further lockdowns. So stimulus is 100% going to be required and is going to come. It's just a matter of when and a matter of how much and how long it's going to have to go on for as well. But you can guarantee it is going to happen. They just, they can't not provide stimulus. The stimulus won't stop until everything is basically reopened and vaccines are out and things like that. Until that happens and, well, you know, they get get on top of it and get control of it, which is uh, no easy task. I can tell you Australia has really struggled, particularly in Victoria. Uh, we've had cases all over the place and they have been in lockdown for months on end and they're only just coming out of their second wave right now. And, you know, we're just hoping that there's no third wave. So... You know, America and other places around the world, they've still got a big uphill battle to try and get on top of it. So it's more likely that it'll be the vaccine that may be coming out next year that will really be, you know, when the stimulus might sort of stop. Uh, and I don't think it'll just stop. I think it'll slow down. The stimulus packages will get smaller and smaller uh, until America and all the places around the world are basically back on their feet. Everyone's vaccinated and we can get back to, you know, some kind of normal, uh, you know, resemblance of a life that we used to have. But I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So the stimulus will continue uh, and all markets will continue to go up. But we need to watch out for when the stimulus stops. Uh, there could be some tight uh, monetary policies put in place in a number of places around the world to try and start to yeah, even up uh, the balance sheets. But, you know, there could be other measures that they could do, you know, quantitative easing to infinity and all sorts of stuff. We'll just have to wait and see. But all right, that's it from me. When, uh, let me know what you think. Do you think our stimulus is going to continue at well into sort of next year? Do you think they will slowly taper it off once things uh, get better with either, you know, them getting on top uh, of the virus uh, in more in terms of managing it than really getting on top of it or until a vaccine comes out and everyone can, again, return to a somewhat sort of normal kind of life. I'd love to know what your, thing, uh, your thoughts are. And do you think we're going to break to the downside here? Do you think we're going to you know, start to come down and maybe retest this 13,800? Or do you think we're going to range in here a little bit and then break to the upside and make a move towards you know, sort of sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000 and maybe even up to around that $20,000 mark? Very, very interesting. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.